Is there some similarity between our solar system and an atom system? A solar system contains a nucleus, the sun, and planets. An atom system contains a nucleus and the electrons. In this video I will compare the atom system to our solar system. There are some different modules of atom systems, Democritus, Dalton, Thomson, Rutherford, Bohr, Chadwick. They all had in mind some concept of particles swirling around. The models from Rutherford, Bohr, Chadwick resemble our solar system with a nucleus and orbiting objects. Quantum mechanics support a nucleus with a cloud of electrons around it. What are the similarities between an atom model and the solar system? In an atom most mass, 99.9% is concentrated in the nucleus. Also, in our solar system the mass is concentrated in the nucleus, 99.86%. The formula to calculate the gravitational force and the formula to calculate the electrical force are quite similar in form. The difference in magnitude is huge, 10 to the minus 43. The similarity between the equations is also physically apparent. Attractive forces bind both systems together electromagnetic force in the atom, and gravitational force in our solar system. In this video I will present indications that our solar system in fact is an expanded atom. Yes. An expanded atom. That is why there is that similarity. If we think of an atom that was increasing to the size of our solar system, we calculate an increase during 4.5 billion years. Of course, the expanded atom would not be the same as our solar system. Of course, it has changed in these 4.5 billion years. But the proportionalities, nucleus and sun, planets and the electrons, and the distances are still similar. How to imagine that a solar system is an expanded atom, that was expanding for 4.5 billion years. Try to expand an atom to the size of a solar system. All measures increasing proportionally. What would happen to the velocity of the orbiting objects? The velocity would proportionally be the same, but the number of orbits per second would decrease. The radius of an orbiting electron at the end shell is 5.3 e minus 11 meters. One orbit equals 2 pi times the radius, resulting in 3.3 e minus 10 meters. This results in about 6.5 e plus 15 orbits, rotations, per second. Now we know why we cannot point out where the electron is at a certain moment. And we understand that this orbiting electron appears to be a kind of cloudy ring around the nucleus. There are some physicists who assert that an electron does not really revolve around a nucleus. But that is just the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum theory. That interpretation of the solutions to Schrodinger's equations is not believed by many physicists. In fact, at a recent conference of quantum physicists, a survey was carried out asking each physicist which interpretation of quantum theory he or she believed in. Only 42% said they believed in the Copenhagen interpretation. Carlos Stroud, an experimentalist at Rochester, says the analogy between the atomic state and the solar system is very deep, but not quite as simple as it seems. Strictly speaking, the wave packet is analogous not to a planet but to two groups of asteroids that proceed and follow Jupiter on its orbit around the Sun. Jupiter's gravity stabilizes the clouds of space rocks, which are known as the Trojan asteroids, in precisely the same way that the microwaves shepherd the wave packet around the atom, Stroud says, mathematically, they're identical. Long story in short, electrons are particles with standing waves. Not just these Trojans and Hildas are rotating around Jupiter. Jupiter does have 78 moons. Quite a lot to shepherd. Also, the outer solar system contains uncountable orbiting objects. Our solar system is as complex as an atom system. The planets of our solar system rotate around their axes. It's called spin. Our planets have continued spinning because of inertia. In the vacuum of space, Spinning objects maintain their momentum and direction, their spin, because no external forces have been applied to stop them. And so, the world, and the rest of the planets in our solar system, keeps spinning. Well no is the spin of our own Earth, one day. But, 
Do electrons spin too? Yes. Also, electrons spin around their axes. Electron spin is a quantum property of electrons. It is a form of angular momentum. It seems to me that there is a similarity between this electron spin and the spinning of our planets in the solar system. It is often stated that a big difference between atom system and solar system is this, electrons can be shared between more than one atom to form molecules. Some people do not know that also in star systems planets can be shared. Planets, comets, even stars, mix up. A star system is never closed. It is open to join other systems. Planetary systems can exist in binary star systems. It means, these planets orbit two stars. As of July 2019, astronomers have found 97 planetary systems containing 143 planets around binary stars. Our solar system shares comets with other star systems. We are observing these phenomena just shortly. Our equipment is improving from day to day, like infrared photography, Sloan Digital Sky Survey, Hubble Space Telescope, Hard X-ray Modulation Telescope, Dark Energy Spectroscopic Instrument, New Satellite Missions like Euclid and Large Hadron Collider. We will see what we will discover with this new equipment. This sharing of planets, comets, and stars seems to be remarkably similar to the way atoms bind to molecules by sharing electrons with other atoms. It's not the same. It's similar after an increase of billions of years. In my video expansion of the universe and Earth, I provided indications that the Earth is expanding. Expanding from a primordial elementary particle to the size of the Earth. Every elementary particle started as a whirling perturbation of the energy field. If that whirling excitation started with a radius of 4.4 e to the minus 11 meters and added, on average, linearly the same radius every second, how big would that primordial elementary particle become after 4.4 billion years, 1.4 e to the plus 17 seconds, the age of the Earth, that is growing 1.4 e to the plus 17 times? The radius would become 6,371,000 meters. The radius of the Earth. This is just an educated guess to show that this dynamic expansion is well possible. The question is then do we observe the expansion of the Earth? What do geologists say about it? When Ben Shen and colleagues calculated the expansion of the Earth at 0.2 millimeters per year, that is 5.4 e to the minus 12 millimeters per second. This is well in accordance with an average increase of 4.4 e to the minus 11 meters per second, our educated guess. Also, the planets and moons in our solar system seem to be more active than previously thought. Volcanoes, fault lines, and lava streams are discovered and need an explanation because we hardly see any subduction. In this field of science, we will obtain new data with new equipment. The expansion must be confirmed from several disciplines. The nucleus of an atom is composed of protons and neutrons. The proton itself is a composite, not a fundamental quantum particle. The quarks and gluons inside it though, along with the electrons that orbit atomic nuclei, are believed to be truly fundamental and indivisible. Is the nucleus of an atom different from the nucleus of a star system? Let's see. Our sun is the nucleus of our solar system. It is a nearly perfect sphere of hot plasma with an internal convective motion that generates a magnetic field by a dynamo process. It accounts for about 99.86% of the total mass of the solar system, just as the nucleus of an atom. The solar orbiter, will provide a lot of new insights into the way our sun produces energy and binds the planets in their orbits. Perhaps it will provide insight too in the nucleus of an atom. We are just shortly capable to explore our sun, to explore the stars and explore the nuclei of atoms. We have to keep our eyes and minds open. Particles, such as electrons are restricted by the rules of quantum mechanics. They are confined to their orbital shells around the nucleus of an atom. To move from one position to another, they must jump to the next quantum state. The electrons are bound to their energy level by quantum mechanics. Do our planets have a similar dynamic regularity in their orbital motions? 
Titius Bode analyzed the proportionalities of the orbital distance of the planets in our solar system. He found a range as you see here. The planets seem to be bound to a fixed distance to the center of the nucleus, our Sun, by a regular pattern, doubling their distance to the Sun. However, this law was discredited because the find of Neptune did not fit in the range. As this video considers the solar system to be an expanded atom, the Titius Bode range is interesting again. The range is a remnant from the early protoplanetary spiraling accretion disk and shows a geometric progression configuration. Raw statistics from exoplanetary orbits strongly point to a general fulfillment of Titius Bode like laws in all the exoplanetary systems. Titius Bode distances are a remnant from the way electrons are restricted to their orbits by the rules of quantum mechanics. As we are discovering more and more exoplanets from day to day, we will find also these similar dynamic regularities in their orbital motions. We found already synchronization of planets orbiting Kepler. The researchers think the synchronization of the movements means the planets formed in a very particular way, with the quartet forming a spatial relationship even as they were assembling from the gas and dust of Kepler-223s protoplanetary disk. Three of Jupiter's moons are also in orbital resonance. Electrons move around the nucleus in a cloud-like formation. Planets orbit the nucleus in a plane. The spherical orbits are flattened after years of expansion by the conservation of angular momentum. If you view the video why do the planets orbit in the same plane? You will notice that it starts with a ball form. That's the original spherical shape at the primordial, atom level. As the atom grows into a protoplanetary disk it is going to be more flat. Probably the geometric implications of dynamic motion patterns from expanding atoms into protoplanetary disks will require a new approach of the evolution from atom system to star system. Atom system and stars system are both part of the same history in their developmental dynamic motions. If there is expansion of space, radiation, matter and time, it is very likely that there is expansion of atoms, electrons, protons. I see astonishing proportionalities and similarities in shape, radiance, movements and behavior. If some object has two wheels and a triangle to fix the wheels together, you can say, it looks like a bike. But if you see an object that has two wheels, a triangle to connect, a chain with pedals to turn the rear wheel and a handlebar to steer, a ringing bell too, I would say, hey, this is a bicycle. In this video. I tried to gather indications that not only space-time in the universe is expanding, but so is all matter, including the atoms and all particles which built matter. The atoms from which we ourselves have been built, the video that you are viewing right now, your eyes registering everything you see, the atoms that form your sight capacity and the nerves that bring these images to somewhere in your brain where a feverish process now starts, a process that we try to imagine. All matter is expanding. So is our equipment, measuring instruments and probes, our telescopes, and laboratories. This image of a protoplanetary star system really looks very much like an atom. This is the first image ever of a hydrogen atom. I made a video about the expansion of the universe and Earth. The expansion is just a small part of the acceleration at the surface of our Earth. The other part is the inflow of energy to the center of mass. These two parts, inflow and expansion, produce the gravitational constant. I made a video about it too, splitting the gravitational constant. If we observe the universe, we are looking back in time. We see our history in the cosmic web as we peer into the sky. All types of star systems, galaxies, quasars, supernovas are showing pictures of our history. It will be complicated to get that picture right. The universe is expanding. In my book Confusing Gravitation, I related this expansion to the Lorentz transformation of mass energy. So, it is not a strange idea to conclude that our star system is an expanded atom. In my opinion, there is a lot more than just an intuitive feeling about this similarity. It is not just founded on the similarities that I mentioned in this video. These are just indications. In my book, the expansion of all matter is founded on the Lorentz transformation of mass energy. It has a strong mathematical base and is supported by hundreds of equations and thousands of calculations. To me, 
it seems very obvious that in an expanding universe all masses are expanding. Many physicists present extremely interesting insights, equations, and calculations about their observations of physical reality. There are many different points of view. An increasing number of interested amateurs try to present new ideas that often differ from mainstream physics. Maybe, something new can arise from all these convictions and bring progress to humanity.